Hey everybody, Marcus here. With the self-imposed social isolation that has come about consequent to technology, the primary form of relationship that a growing majority of people experience is the parasocial relationship. If this is the first time you have heard the term, then let me explain. A parasocial relationship is the one directional arrangement that exists between a fan and a rock star, for example, between the fan and the celebrity, between a subject and his king. It's that sense of familiarity that grows when one has been exposed to another person through a medium like television, film, music, magazines, books, and of course, social media. In its extreme form, this sort of relationship can turn into stalking behavior. This sort of relationship used to have few outlets to form prior to the 20th century. Sure, there were always famous people by reputation, but a member of the general public was not exposed to the image or works of such figures often enough or with such detail that a parasocial relationship would form. No, they simply heard of the person and knew a little bit of what their reputation was about. However, with the advent of radio and then television, the phenomenon began to expand. Actors and musicians became celebrities on a mass scale. The frequency with which one would be exposed to the other person through media was orders of magnitude of that of mere reputation. You could see the person and hear them speak. You would interface with the person through the senses that were usually limited to in-person interactions. Also, the type of exposure changed. It was not only that you would see an actor in a movie. There were also interviews in which they would share details about their private lives, for example. The celebrity took on a human dimension that mere reputation could not convey. In this way, someone exposed to the image, sound, and personal details of an actor started to feel like they actually knew the other person. In some sense, this person became like a friend to them. Now, in some ways, this parasocial friendship was better than a real friendship. Sure, the celebrity was not talking with the fan directly or hanging out, but the celebrity was also not criticizing or making any demands on the time of the fan. Indeed, a fantasy could grow in the mind of the fan that was always ideal, or, well, ideal enough. In either case, this false sense of familiarity could and has been known to devolve into an obsession. The fan may feel like the celebrity is the only person who truly understands them, well, because he wrote a few songs that were interpreted by the fan to perfectly describe his life or feelings. Or, the fan may feel like the celebrity is their soulmate and that the two should be together. Stalkers are what comes into being when the parasocial relationship goes to the extreme. However, in our current world of social media, stalking, well, is built into the system. People share a lot. This makes your average woman with an Instagram profile a public figure, a mini celebrity in her own right if she garners a following, even if it's a modest few thousand followers. This is what social media is designed to do, to accumulate friends, followers, subscribers, or whatever each platform calls it. It's about making friends, except the relationship works in the opposite direction. It is not the Instagram model that has made 100,000 friends, no. It's her 100,000 followers who have each made one friend, an imaginary friend. And of course, this friend is imaginary. Firstly, most of the content on social media is either outright fake or at minimum curated. Secondly, the Instagram model has no idea those 100,000 followers even exist while well, outside of the number on a screen. Now. Let me note here that simply following someone on social media does not entail a parasocial relationship actually exists. Not everyone forms that emotional bond, but a lot of people do. This is an account of those who do form that bond. Someone living in a parasocial relationship begins to trust the celebrity. The fan becomes vulnerable to suggestions. The fan will buy things from the celebrity or things recommended by the celebrity consequent to this trust. Or, in the case of many desperate men, they will just throw money at the celebrity for nothing more than a few seconds of attention on a stream. The money, well, it's not being given as a token of appreciation for providing commensurate value, 
but because the fan is trying to be nice to their friend. With the psychological safety net of real-life friends slowly disappearing from the lives of more and more people, the need for social connection is being filled in this parasocial relationship sort of way. These imaginary friends are a psychological defense for the isolated individual. Human beings are social beings. We can't psychologically survive without a connection to someone else. Some have Jesus. Some have the writers of literature, philosophy, or poets. Some have mainstream celebrities, while others have social media figures. No matter what the target of the parasocial relationship is, the friend is ultimately imaginary. The subject that exists in the mind of the fan, even if such a subject exists in reality, is not the same as the subject of reality. The subject of reality is completely unknown. This is why so many people are shocked to discover how celebrities are so different in person than what they were imagined to be. Yeah, it's because the observer never knew the celebrity in the first place. It was just his imagination crafting a character wearing the face of a real person. If people do not make real friends, they will make imaginary friends. And this is exactly what is happening. A growing epidemic of people with imaginary friends. Soon enough, with AI-generated figures, these friends will cross the boundary from parasocial in relation to a human being and move to a 100% imaginary model. Technology is not the solution. Technology is a catalyst for the problem. We don't go about solving the problems created with technology by introducing, well, more technology. It's like the feminists trying to solve the problems introduced by feminism with more feminism. What we need to do is give people a framework for understanding the problem and situation they exist in. Once the language and conceptual frameworks are in place, a person can take action in their own life to carve out an island of sanity in the sea of madness. It's like the problem of smoking. There was a time when no one knew it was bad for you. Everyone smoked. Now, everyone knows cigarettes are bad. Cigarettes are still available everywhere, and yet fewer and fewer people are smoking. Smoking is also just as addictive as social media, yet somehow the kids are not hopped up on nicotine. This is where we are with social media right now. People don't yet know it is bad for them. Education will solve that, as it did with cigarettes. Sure, it may be decades for such education to reach the mainstream consciousness, but it will eventually. So, there is hope. As for those who exist in today's times, it's up to you to put down the junk and figure out how to interact with living human beings. Sure, there may be a lot of zombies out there, but pockets of humanity still exist. So figure out how to find them. The struggle, after all, is part of the fun of being human. If life was easy, it would not be worth living. Thanks for listening. Go team.